Hello there everybody and welcome to this channel. My name is Tavho from SA Anatomy but you can call me Savvy. And for this video we're going to be working on this little guy, a goat. So as you can see here, uh, I'm using the skeleton as sort of a guide. So it's really just, it's a lot of stress off my shoulders where I don't have to focus on uh, okay, whether this these proportions are correct or anything, I just have to put the uh, basic shapes over the skeleton and just sculpt over them later on. Now, for this one, I was really lucky that we were able to get a skeleton model of the goat uh, that is in such a good pose. It's in such a good neutral pose. It's not perfect, but it is very good. Uh, you can get this online in Sketchfab and all other places. So what you want to do is you normally want to start off with something that would help you sculpt easier. So you can either use ZBrush's default projects or their example projects, or you can start off from scratch by yourself and uh, you can start sculpting. You can either merge everything, uh, all the sub tools or keep them as different, different sub tools and then uh, edit all the different parts and then merge them together later on but I usually just merge everything right from the get-go because it's really easier to do it that way and also ZBrush Core doesn't have uh, really good tools to to merge things together unlike the official releases of ZBrush and all that but ZBrush Core is really handy as well so you can just keep your separate sub tools you either keep them separate or you can just join everything and then just hit dynamesh and then retopologize and you're ready to go so to be honest there's nothing really crazy going on at this point there, there never really is anything crazy going on when you're blocking things out you just want the major shapes that control the entire mesh i suppose uh, and also when it comes to the anatomy of a goat it's really simple because uh it, most of the things you'll find here you'll find in other animals so once you know how to do one animal you kind of already know how to do all of them almost so there's nothing really major about it or anything really crazy about a goat I, I, I probably the only thing that's really crazy about a goat for me is, is probably the eyes the eyes are really they, they just look very strange but uh, everything else that's it, it's normally what you would find in other animals so blocking everything out and then putting it together and then starting to sculpt later on. So starting off with the sculpt, I do what I normally do, just picking a brush and going in and roughing things out. Um, but also trying to, for this one, for, for the goat, I am trying to smooth things out at the same time because I'm trying to remember that uh, goats don't have major like muscular shapes or anything like that. They, they don't really look like they can they can take you down. Obviously, when you strip them down and you look at the anatomy, you can now see that, okay, there's actually muscle details here and they're actually pretty thick or something like that. But usually they, they, they're not that big. So your common goat would just look normal. So I'm trying to smooth things out as I structure everything so that uh, it doesn't cause too many problems in the future where I have to now go in and smooth things um, at a larger scale. So I'm just smoothing things out as I work. Like for example, the latissimus dorsi over here, um, it shouldn't be too large, it shouldn't be too long, it, it should just look normal, almost like it, there's a outline where the latissimus dorsi should be or anything like that. So it's, an, it's unlike a lion where uh, you can it, it's really prominent like certain muscles are really big so they're really prominent but uh, for creatures or animals like these you just want to smooth things out as you go along just so it makes it so much easier for you whilst you're sculpting by the way when it comes to your meshes topology in zbrush core or any other zbrush or whatever uh, when you're retopologizing it's best to just uh, hit z remesher as many times as possible until you get something that looks really good and if the topology is now starting to break or anything just go up in subdivision levels and deform it perhaps or like use dynamesh a little to just kind of adjust everything and then go back into uh, z remesher and just keep on hitting z remesher it really helps to get the proper topology and also something really low res at the same time well, that's if you are choosing to zero mesh to a lower resolution. Otherwise, you can just choose to uh, try to adjust the, the topology uh, itself via ZBrush, but you keep the same number of polygons. 
So to be honest, this sculpt was extremely easy to work on. I worked on this very quickly. And this is mainly because of what I mentioned before, that once you understand one animal's anatomy, you almost understand all of them or most of them. Uh, say, for example, you're used to you working on bipedal creatures or humans. Say, for, for example, you will be uh, quick to work on something like a humanoid creature or something that uh, resembles a human say for fantasy or sci-fi creatures or whatever so this was mainly easy because i understood how most uh, animals like these look and how the an anatomy works so it was easier for me to work on uh, the goat much quicker than i would with uh, any other creature that i wasn't used to so like i mentioned before it's very important to know that uh, most of these muscle groups aren't thick especially when you're working on a goat you would have to notice that uh, these muscle groups shouldn't be too big they should be average in terms of size um, such as the clitor cervicalis for example but that's not usually thick uh, that goes for other animals as well the clitor cervicalis is normally kind of thin but other other groups uh, like your deltoids, uh, they're normally pretty thick, but for a goat, they'll be average sized. For the face of a goat, it's really good that you, you'd find some really good references out there, but uh, normally they will give you side images. Um, it also goes for the entire body. You would usually find side viewed uh, reference images for goats. Um, but usually, if, if you understand how most of uh, other animals' anatomy are formed, you, you would be able to just fit in the pieces yourself if you don't really know what the front view would look like. Like, for example, the pectoral of, of a goat, it looks like any other animal, really. But uh, the face is obviously very different when it comes to a goat, but the side view usually gets most of the details so it's really good that you just use uh, these reference images also um, speaking of reference images you don't always have to use images you can you can actually get some reference um, from 3d models well, other people have done um, anatomy studies on certain animals and whatnot so you can just review those 3d models or you can take screenshots of them and you can use them as references or you could actually, you know, do the old school thing and go to a barn or anything like that and look at actual animals and see how they look. So you don't just find reference images on the internet and on just images, you can find them anywhere, honestly. Now, coming to the legs, I'm not sure if you noticed, um, but if you did, you would, you would have seen that the legs were rather skinny for uh, this mesh. So what you can do for shapes like that, because when you try to sculpt over, um, the other side of the mesh is really close to the side that you're sculpting over. So it will edit both sides. So it'll look very messy. It'll just break the entire mesh itself. So what you can do is you can um, select the inflate brush and set the draw size to high, and then just sculpt over that and it should inflate on all sides and make it thick enough for you to sculpt freely without messing the other side of the mesh. Now at this point there isn't anything major that we're going to be working on besides the fine details. Um, well the other thing that I did work on was I did make layers um, for different parts of the body. Uh, so I just masked everything and then I created different layers. This is so that I would be able to go back to those layers or those parts of the mesh and be able to edit those parts without changing anything else that I don't want to be changed. So right now it's just really refining things, just going in and putting in details and uh, roughing things out and going in with the damn standard and adding in those creases and those dips and those nice little fine details. And after that, this mesh is ready and uh, complete.